Hi, trust you're all doing well. Let's discuss international politics in the skies above. And here, I mean the aerospace domain. India's space policy has strived to achieve a fine balance between capabilities, entrepreneurship and innovation. The question is how to move ahead in spacefaring in the prevailing geopolitical circumstances. The Indian Air Force, the IAF, recently published its revised and a rather ambitious doctrine that aims to transition India from an air power to an aerospace power. Clearly, it implies and requires a paradigm shift when it comes to outlook and capabilities. But can India achieve it alone? The answer by itself could be affirmative, but loses significance when time and cost are taken into consideration. A better question to ask is, can India do it by itself in time and with cost effectiveness? And here, nothing underscores the critical importance of technical collaboration, as does the India-France strategic partnership on space. So, as India embarks upon attaining a robust personality as a space-faring nation and an aerospace power, it looks to build mutually beneficial partnerships with other spacefarers, especially with those with whom India has had a history of reliability, mutual understanding and good faith. And one of the most preeminent partnerships that India has built in terms of uh, space collaboration is with France. But where to place this relationship in the larger matrix of India-France strategic cooperation? What we have with France is a three-pronged cooperation matrix and space cooperation is a part of it. So, France and India essentially have a three-pronged cooperation in defence, space and nuclear energy. And then there are also overlapping areas like convergence on climate change and triangular cooperation in third countries. All of which, when taken together, has strengthened this relationship even further. What is interesting is that collaboration in the defence sector, which has seen unprecedented growth in recent times is also thematically related to the second prong that is space cooperation. What do I mean when I say thematically related? Stargazing starts from the waters of the Indo-Pacific. Counting on its tremendous strategic convergence with India is a key desideratum for France as well. What is referred to as the Indo-Pacific theatre basically comprises the Indian and Pacific Oceans. While the latter is already home to US manoeuvres, but it, when it comes to the Indian Ocean region, where the Indian Peninsula juts out, France is the only country with physical territory, like the Reunion Island and so forth. Therefore, it is in the best mutual interests of India and France to collaborate in the Indian Ocean region and uphold a rule-based order and freedom of navigation. You know, the underlying objective is also to uphold a multipolar order so that the region doesn't fall prey to China's wolf warriorism. In the same spirit, India and France are also the only two countries that have a joint vision for the Indian Ocean region that focuses, and rightly so, on developing MDA, the Maritime Domain Awareness Capabilities, to ensure an effective security architecture in the region. You know, for the uninitiated, MTA capabilities are directly linked with SSA capabilities, that is the space situational awareness capabilities. But that's not all. The tenacity of India-France space cooperation has a solid history to back it up. You know, the history of India-France bilateral cooperation on space goes back all the way to the 60s. And one of its key legacies is the development of propulsion technology, which has stood the test of time. You know, the Indian film Rocketry, the Nambi effect, based on the life of maverick ISRO scientist Nambi Narayan, played by actor R. Mathavan, shows this journey of travelling to France with his group of researchers to learn the complexities of liquid engines, a technology that France had pioneered at that time. 
The collaboration between the two countries continued well into the 1980s as France started launching those Indian satellites from Ariane, a European space launcher at the French Guiana Centre, that were not put into orbit by ISRO's polar satellite launch vehicles or the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicles. The 2010s saw this cooperation grow by leaps and bounds as well. In 2013, the France's National Center for Space Studies established a permanent liaison center in India at the Consulate General of France in Bengaluru. Moreover, in April 2015, the relationship got a further fillip when the two space agencies signed an MOU on space cooperation. This was followed by a release of a joint vision for space cooperation in various areas of space exploration in March 2018. 2019 again was a rather turning point of a year for France. Just as the country formally published its Indo-Pacific strategy and emphasized the role of India as a partner in the seas, it took the Paris-Delhi space cooperation several notches up. As a result, there was refurbished enthusiasm in Indo-France space undertakings. Following President Emmanuel Macron's state visit to India, CNES and ISRO announced the creation of the Indo-French Working Group on India's Human Space Flight Mission, which was developed further in 2019. Another landmark agreement inked in 2019 formalized the development of a maritime surveillance centre in India to detect, identify and track ships in the Indian Ocean. Besides boosting MTA, joint development of advanced capabilities for climate monitoring as well as lending support to India's ambitious mission to Mars, Venus and asteroids were also announced. By the way, worth mentioning that for CNES, in terms of volume of engagement, ISRO is second only to NASA. So how has the Ukraine war affected the Indo-France space cooperation? Just three months after Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, India and France signed a key pact that formalized a bilateral strategic dialogue to enhance coordination and jointness between their space and defense agencies. With this pact, France became the third country after the US and Japan to set up a space security dialogue with India. However, the relationship is even more special to Paris as New Delhi happens to be the first in Asia with whom France has set up such a mechanism. Another key focus of this bilateral dialogue was the strategy to protect space assets. You know, as in the Indo-Pacific, China is the principal violator of norms and outer space as well. The irresponsible anti-satellite test of 2007 and uncontrolled re-entries by China into Earth has cautioned other space-faring states. So, is the geopolitical bifurcation seen on Earth reflecting in space as well? It is, and I'll explain how. You know, joint scientific research had, till now, remained unfettered by unconducive developments on Earth. The international space system, the ISS, can be held up as a symbol of genuine cooperation where different modules were taken care of by different spacefaring nations. However, the Ukraine war has fragmented the geopolitical system and its impact on the space domain is unmissable. Sanctions are most likely to impact Russia's spacefaring capabilities because of its critical dependence on microchips. Just like on Earth, Russia is likely to get pushed with China in the flannel skies too. In a widening wedge between Europe and Russia, a European Union report showed that Moscow's Roscosmos had withdrawn its engineers from a joint space center in Conru in French Guiana. Russia also announced to halt deliveries of rocket engines for launching satellites. The, all this is not good news. But on the flip side, this situation provides an opportunity for India to increase its satellite launching capacity, counting on its collaboration with France, which has already been helping India with launches. It is also the right time for India to encourage participation by the private sector, which will not only make the system more competitive, but also ensure better efficiency. What is interesting is that India's venture into more satellite launches will be a safe zone because it is the least affected by sanctions on Russia.
Experts say that in the case of satellites, it is Europe and not Russia which exports about 60% of cost components to India. However, the same cannot be said of the reported physical damage to the Indian facilities in Ukraine, where Delhi was to test its semi-cryogenic engines. While the exact details about the extent of damage are not known yet, the facilities remain vulnerable as air attacks by Russia only intensify by the day. If there is any truth in such claims, it is going to impede ISRO's space maneuvers. Now, what is the best strategy for India then? While boosting collaboration with France is key, India must diversify space partnerships in a way that doesn't land us in vulnerable dependencies that become detrimental to our ambitions to become an aerospace power. Therefore, alongside France, India must also develop the expanse and depth of space collaboration with the Quad countries, the US, Japan and Australia as well. Geopolitics has already started to converge with aerospace politics and a space race. The like-minded countries must work together to develop a regime complex in space to better govern and protect space assets and exploration. It will be interesting to see how the geopolitical tensions on Earth shape the space cooperation matrix. I'll be back to discuss that and more. Stay tuned.